So today's video is going to be very different. Hello everyone. This is an encouragement during the pandemic video. So we're outside like I'm telling everyone to be in the bright sunshine. Uh, technically we're not exercising because we're currently on the golf cart. Sorry, that's cheating. But I didn't think I could talk and still walk at the same time. I might get a little short of breath, you know. So we're on the golf cart and I wanted to just update you with some things I've realized during this pandemic. So I have come up with my own new diagnosis for all of my friends, family, and co-workers that I've noticed. This may or may not apply to you, but I'm calling it pandemic brain. Now, remember, I am not a psychiatrist. I'm not claiming to be, but I have noticed as characteristics of this pandemic brain that we all are feeling just a little bit more vulnerable. We all may be having some uh, spikes in anxiety. Uh, and I think part of it is also that we're more easily distracted. So I know personally I've noticed this. I have noticed this in a lot of my coworkers. I have also seen a very big interest in my coworkers who are obviously healthcare workers. I work in an you know, outpatient pediatric clinic and we're doing all sorts of amazing things now in the midst of this pandemic, including only well visits indoors and all sick or respiratory symptom visits outdoors through a drive-through drive -through clinic manned by a lot of staff and providers. And we're doing more telehealth, which I think is awesome. And we've had excellent leadership from our administration. Not all healthcare workers can say that, and I feel bad for them these days. I'm very blessed not to be working in an emergency department or intensive care unit these days. So I have it much better than many of my fellow healthcare workers. But even those, my fellow healthcare workers at my office are coming to me saying, I need some hope, I need some encouragement, I'm feeling really bad about things, and um, several of them have come up to me and just burst into tears for no exact or specific reason of which they are aware. And guys, these are people who are very emotionally stable and sound, seriously. So I don't want you to feel bad or feel abnormal if you are feeling stressed during these times because I think everybody is, and that's a very typical response. I do wanna, however, make you aware of some things that you can do both for yourself and for your children during these times. Now, if you've ever flown on a plane and heard the, um, uh, the spiel that you get before you fly about safety, it says that you need to get your own oxygen mask before you help those around you, right? And I think the same thing applies during these tough days and for our own mental health. So some of these tips I wanna share with you today for our mental health during the pandemic are for both parents and children. Also, I'd like to reference a previous video about anxiety. Please watch that if you need it because it does have helpful tips specifically for children, for pediatrics, but a lot of these things apply to both. So I want you to take care of yourself. Now, some of you, many of you are having to work from home right now, and that's tricky. I don't know which is trickiest, working from home or uh, having to go into the office or the hospital as a healthcare worker, because that's also very scary. But if you are having to do your work at home, can I just encourage you to try to set aside a specific area that's designated for work? Because I know one of the concerns is we all need a place where we can rest and recuperate and relax. And you can't do that if you're starting to see your home as your workplace as well, right? So um, you'll notice behind us, we're just driving the golf cart around the farm, so enjoy the ride. But um, if you are bringing your computer home, I want you to designate an area on your dining room table, perhaps. That would be probably my top pick. So you can still eat if you have a separate dining room and kitchen table. If not, put it on the kitchen table and just wipe up and clean up behind it. Um, and be careful not to get liquids on it and hurt your computer, but I want you to designate a work area at home. I want you to try to keep the same sort of schedule. This is important for the children. It's important for grown-ups. Set the alarm clock. Maybe it doesn't have to be quite as early as it would have been for real going into the office work, but it still needs to be set. You need to get up. You need to get dressed. You need to make your bed. I know that sounds silly, but it's not because you need to have a specific start of the day and in the same way I want you to continue having a bedtime ritual or routine before you go to sleep at night because you need to have a normal bedtime so many kids including some of my college kids two of them that are home have adopted some nocturnal habits that aren't really that healthy because we all need a good sleep wake cycle right now it's critical because quality sleep actually makes your immune system work better so I want to encourage you to get quality sleep I want to encourage you to turn off the television the children don't need to hear some of this stuff. And even we as adults can be overwhelmed by all of the sad and scary and terrifying news. By the way, it is sad and scary and terrifying, okay? So I need you to not watch too much of it so that you can stay in a mentally good place. But I do also need you to show me some common sense, show some respect for healthcare workers by staying home and staying safe. It's not stuck at home, it's safe at 
hum, every single contact you make exposes you to all the contacts those people have had. It reminds me of when I'm teaching teenagers about sexually transmitted infections. When you have sex with a partner, you're having sex with every partner they ever had. Well, these days, that's just like with COVID. When you shake hands with somebody, you're shaking hands with everybody they've shaken hands with for the last two weeks. So how about you not shake hands and how about you send one person to the grocery store and that person uses a whole lot of hand sanitizer afterwards, okay? So I need you to get adequate sleep. I need you to get daily exercise. I need you to get outdoors and get some sunshine. I need you to limit your screen time. I want you to find your board games and get them out. I want you to have quality family meals together with your family. I want you to answer your kids' questions when they have them. So if your child comes to you and says, Mom, I'm scared about this virus, you validate their feelings. I'm scared too, darling, and it's hard to be scared. And being scared is a yucky feeling. But guess what? You are safe, and we are washing our hands, and we are staying home. And still, I can tell you as a pediatrician, children, the pediatric age group, truly is still relatively spared. Not 100%, but relatively spared. And I want to throw in something, too, not to guilt you, but hopefully to scare you straight into staying home. I do believe, I've seen this before, but I believe it's true. If our grandparents were tasked with staying home to protect their grandchildren, they would do it. So when you 20-somethings are out there having the time of your life not staying home, that is so selfish because you're not protecting your grandparents, and they would for you. And that's just not very kind of you. Okay, so I need you to stay home and stay safe and stop the spread of this virus. If we could stop spreading it, it would die. And we are gonna make it through to the other side, but the goal is to do that without overwhelming our healthcare facilities and our number of ventilators and our number of intensive care unit beds. So we've got to flatten the curve and so far, we're really not doing a great job of that. I mean, our family's trying. We found our Wii games. We're playing Just Dance. We are having a ball. We are having family meals together. We played Pictionary last night. We are hugging our pets. We are playing on the piano. We are singing to the top of our lungs. We are sitting on the back porch and singing together. We're having family devotions together. So guys, if you are believers, I would encourage you to find a few encouraging Bible verses. I have hundreds of them if you need to know them. And just internalize them, memorize them, say them to yourself. Pray. This is what we need to do. If you are not a believer, find somebody who is and they can explain this and you can meditate for right now. You can spend time out in the beautiful creation. Do you see this farm around me? It's gorgeous. So I want you to encourage you guys to get outside, get outdoors, have fun, encourage your children, be honest with them, answer their questions, but don't let them see all the scary stuff and make sure you offer them only reassurance because that's what they need to hear right now so that they're able to sleep and maintain their bedtime routine and not get stressed out. So I want to encourage you with all these things. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope this was informative and encouraging. Thanks. She is. Okay, come here. Get your head over here. I want to hug you. It's ready. Good girl. That's a good donkey. Hey, girl. Crazy girl. I forgot to mention please also keep trying to have a healthy diet so it turns out the Mediterranean diet is just about good for everything that means fish and poultry not a lot of red meat sorry even though we're on a beef cattle farm um, it means lots of olive oil berries green leafy vegetables nuts 
peanut butter, things that have fat but they're heart healthy fat are really good for your brain. And just remember to eat the rainbow, lots of different colors. They're always good for everything, antioxidants and boosting your immune system and all the important things right now. So eat a healthy diet and do lots of crafts. We have had the most fun. My girls helped me do a whole bunch of Bible verses we laminate and hand out for encouragement. And also today we wrote 16 cards for some uh, little old ladies in our church to mail them hopefully to give them some encouragement. So this is a great time to encourage your children to do community service basically from home, but it's also fun, good craft time too. Baby, come give me something on. Baby, come give me something on.